Alright, so you guys have a challenge, right? Yeah. What's your challenge? Alright, so you have to take a beep, fly as far as you can using a catapult, right? Okay. Can anyone raise, raise your hand now? Can anyone tell me what three kinds of catapults are? Catapults are where you build something that you can find, you can make something that goes really far. So what, do you know the names of them though? Do you know the names of the types of catapults? A pulley? Pulley is a simple machine. You can use it in a catapult to help you, but it's not necessarily a catapult by itself. Yes? A slingshot. A slingshot, alright? Slingshot is close. So this right here is a ballista. All right, it's what it's called, the official name for it. What a ballista is, it's like a really big slingshot, okay? So I have an example one right here, all right? You have something that's gonna stretch, it's gonna pull back, and then when you let go, it launches, all right? So ballista gets energy where? Where did the energy come from there? Nothing. What part of this got, gives it the energy? Pulling. Pulling on what? Raise your hands. The spring. The spring. The string right here, right? This elastic string that I have is what gives it the energy. Okay? What else could give it energy? What else could I use that can store some energy in it if I pull on it? like energy and power here. I'm talking about what can you use to actually get these things, okay? So here we're using this elastic string. This elastic string can pull back, and when it stretches and you let go, it has energy in it, right? So when you flex this stick, or the ruler, or whatever you end up using, you can also get energy out of it, all right? Does anyone know how a bow works, like a regular bow and arrow? Yeah. Press my arrow! You have to pull, pull the string back. Mm -hmm. What part of a bow holds the energy? The string does not hold any energy in a bow, at all. The arrow? The arrow is what you put the energy into. The wood part? The wood part, all right? When you pull a bow back, it looks like this, and it flexes, right? And when you let go, it snaps back straight. That's where you get the energy from in a bow, is the body of the bow, all right? The string doesn't hold energy, the string stays the same size the whole time. Now over here, it's a lot easier to use something stretchy for this part, right? Then this to bend these. We don't want to break the, the, the yardsticks. So if you can use the set of stretching the wood, you can stretch the string. They both give you power, right? Yes. Okay? What else can we do? Anyone know a different kind of catapult? Uh, catapult that launches. Catapult that launches. All right, we have two different kinds of those. This one here is called a trebuchet. All right? This one here... It's called, it's generally referred to as just a catapult. That's the regular name for it. Um, a more correct name is an onager. All right? So, we have an example of that right here. All right? This one's a little more complex. It's got a little more parts. If you just break it down, though, it's very simple. So what happens is I'm going to pull this back. All right? When I pull this back, what's stretching? Where's the energy coming from? The sticks, all right? Is the string stretching at all? No. No, all right? All the power is coming from these sticks right here. And then when I pull the release, it's going to release all the energy, all right? Oh. And it fires. That okay? was so fun. So that's what this is, all right? This right here is representing like a rubber band, all right? So if I take these strings away, and I just put a rubber band between here and here, and I let go, is it going to fire? No. It's a rubber band, not a string. Rubber oh, yeah, bands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so you can bend the wood, or if you're using a stretchy material like rubber bands, elastic rope we have over here, you can stretch it and get energy. But regular string, does it hold power or no? <coughs> no, regular string doesn't hold any power at all. All right? Then we have this other kind over here. It's called a trebuchet, okay? The way a trebuchet works is you have an arm, all right? That's all you really have to have is an arm and something for it to spin around. Okay? So that's going to spin. All right? How does spinning help? There's not a 
a string in this one at all. All you have is this arm. Okay? So I have this arm. How am I going to launch with just this arm? Wind? No? You pull down that part right here. Exactly. All right, I'm going to push down here. If I push down here, that part goes up. So if I push down hard, it'll go really fast. Okay? So how can I replace me pushing down? What can I use? Spinning the screwdriver, it's not connected together, so if I spin the screwdriver, it's not going to do anything. Alright? What can push down instead of me? What can I use to push down? What pushes down hard? Something elastic. Something elastic? I could stretch uh, like a rubber band from here to the ground, and that would work, it would pull it down? You could pull, you could pull something up, as, as the law of physics say, that energy cannot be created or destroyed, and it's except, a uh, vulgar some exception, like nuclear power, but I'm not going there. That's correct. You pull it down. You can pull it up, and the other side goes down, giving it more room to go forward. What if I see something heavy? Oh wait. That's yeah, that's All right. So I have something heavy here, and I let go. It launches, right? Yep. Okay. So if I just pick it up and let go, it launches, right? That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> So here's where I'm going to come into the algebra, all right? So if you have energy going in, right? That's energy going in. It's an E. It's going to be equal to your energy going out, right? Mm -hmm. Except okay. friction robs some of your energy. Friction is going to take some energy, but we're not losing very much here. So in order to make the math a lot easier, we're going to ignore that. Okay. That is true. That is correct. All right. So energy going in. In this one, where's the energy coming from? The string or or the wood, right? So we can have energy from here or here, right? On this one, where's the energy coming from? The string. The string, right? This right here is where the energy is coming from. Even in this one over here, the energy is really coming from the strings. That's where it's getting pushed to the uh, the catapult from. It's stored in the wood, but it's coming from the spring, the strings that are pulling it. This one over here, where's the energy come from? It's not as obvious in this one. The heavy thing? The heavy thing. What about the heavy thing has energy? It makes gravity. It pulls it down. Gravity, all right? So if I have this, all right, by itself, separate from the catapult, all right, does it have any energy right now? No. No, none at all, okay? What about now? Yeah. Yes. That's a lot of energy, right? If I let go of it, what's going to happen? It's going to drop. So it's going to change from what kind of energy? I heard it. Potential energy to kinetic energy. Potential to kinetic, to sound, heat. Um, that's about it. There's a couple other forms of energy, but they're almost non-existent. So it's going to fall, and it's going to create energy while it's falling. Is it creating energy? No. No. It is doing what? You said a second ago. Converting energy. Converting energy, okay? So the whole idea here is we're converting energy. So in this one, the energy comes from this, right? Mm -hmm. So, if we put twice as much energy in, is it going to go twice as fast? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 You guys don't know. That's the whole point. You don't know. No, we okay? do. So, this is where the algebra comes in that I was talking about. All right, so if you have energy in, that's going to be some number. There's a bunch of different ways. Each one of these has a different way to solve for that, okay? Your energy going out is going to be equal to this, mv squared, okay? What? What? Looks complicated, right? What? It's really easy. This m stands for mass. What's mass? The amount of stuff in it. The amount of stuff in it, all right? Is something really, really lightweight have a lot of mass? No. No. Does something really, really heavy have a lot of mass? Yes. Yes. Okay? So mass is really just the weight of your object. Okay? That's how you can think about it. It's not entirely correct, but it makes it easier to think about. Okay? What is this? Volume. Not volume. Velocity. Velocity. Okay? So if you look at this, what happens to velocity here? It's going up times two. It's not times two. It's squared. 
times two times two again. Square. Yeah. Square. Okay. So if it's squared, what does that mean? It's times itself. It's times itself. So if our velocity is, let's say we start with just one is our velocity, okay? If our velocity is one and we square it, how much energy is that changing by? One, right? Which means one times one. So then our energy would be equal to m times one, all right? Now we want to go twice as fast, okay? So now our velocity is two. When we square two, what happens? What number do we get? Four. Four, okay? So how much more energy do we have now? Four times as much, right? Okay? And let's say we want to go faster again. So let's say we go from two and now we want to double it again. So we want to go from two to four. Alright? How much energy do we have? We have four. Sixteen. Sixteen. Alright? So mass times sixteen is how much energy we have. So if you put twice as much energy in, do you get twice as much speed? I'm going to raise your hand. Try and explain it. Anybody? No. No, because of air resistance. We're ignoring air resistance. We're ignoring air resistance. We're ignoring friction. Yes. Yes, because, like you said, it, if you times it, it goes twice as fast. So if it goes as, like, 16, it's going to go, like, really fast, maybe? Okay. Um, so if I, have, if I have one speed, all right? We're not putting any units on this. We're just saying if I have one unit of speed, then I have m times 1 energy, right? Okay? If I have 2 units of speed, then I have m times what? 4. four. Yeah. If I have 4 units of speed, I have m times what? 16. 16. Alright? So, does twice the speed mean twice the energy? No. What does it mean? Squared the energy. Squared the energy. Alright? So, if I want to have twice as much speed, how much more energy do I need? <coughs> Square times two. What's the difference between this one and this one? How much bigger is this one than this one? Three. Three. How many times bigger is it? Four. Four. How many times bigger is this one? Four. Four. So if I want to have twice as much speed, how much more energy do I need? Four, Four times as much, right? So you need to think about that when you're designing these. So the speed from this one comes from how far this object falls, right? The higher up it is, the more energy it has. The speed for these two, how do I make that stronger? If I have a rubber band and I pull on it, I pull it this far back, is it very strong? No. No. But if I pull it farther back? It's stronger. It's stronger. Exactly. So, to increase the energy in these ones, how would you do it? We just said it. Pull it farther back, right? Okay. So, you want to increase your total energy here. Now, you have, that's one way to make it go farther, is increasing your energy. What's another way to make it go farther? We just said that. So it's increasing energy. How else can we make it go farther other than increasing the energy? So if I have my peep here, and I want it to go out the door, and I throw it, did I use the energy very well? No. Oh, you need a base? To you need a base to hold it. So it won't fall back, but it will stay on, and it will launch forward. But when I just did that, did I throw the peep the direction I wanted it to go? No. No. It went backwards. Like it backward. You need to, like a little. You need like something backwards. to counteract the direction. You need something to put the direction the wrong way, and then you use it as like a lever. You use it as a lever. <laughs> well, do I need do I need to have anything different here, or can I just throw it that way? Throw it that way. I can just throw it that way, right? So what changed there between me throwing it this way and that way? Direction. The direction. Okay. So there's two ways you can increase this. If I throw it um, backwards, am I being very efficient? No. no. No, that's negative. That's worse than it was when it started. If I throw it forward towards where I want to go, is that being efficient? Yes. Yes. So you want to increase your efficiency, okay? Now, 
One last thing, all right? So if I'm throwing it, and I throw it straight, all right, what happened there?
launch is right here, is that very useful? No. If it launches like right there, is that yeah. good? No. It's all right. Kind of. You've got to remember, it's going to launch like this. Okay, it's going to fly out and away from the handle. So if I have it straight up, that's going to launch yeah. straight. Is launching straight good? No. No. Okay. So we want it to launch like right about there, so it'll fly up and away. Okay. What else can I change on that to make it stronger? The string doesn't give it power. What gives this one power? I mean, the, wood. the wood. Okay. So in this design, your string does give it power. All right. The string is stretching. In this design, the wood is what stretches. So you changing the wood would make it more powerful. Okay. And this one here, how can we change it to make it stronger? Um, uh, Where's the power come from? The weight. The weight. All right. So this mass right here is what's giving me my power. How is the mass giving me the power? Pulls down on the stick. So when it's up high, it has power, right? It has energy stored in it. When I let it go, it doesn't have energy anymore. So how can I give it more energy? Make, Put it up higher. Make it go not heavy. Put it up higher in the air. Put it up higher in the air. Perfect. So the more I raise it and the more it falls, the better. Okay, it gives me more energy. What else can I do to change this to give it more energy? If I have it right here and I want it to have more energy, how can I do that? Put Without it raising it. Make it more light. Make I it lighter? Make Does that give you more energy or less energy? Make it less energy. To so making it heavier. All right, if I have a heavier object, it's going to have more energy, right? So that's another way I can make that stronger. All right? Last thing that's all I want to talk about, all right? You might notice there's a couple of holes in this. Why would I have a couple of holes in it? To keep the heavy thing from going down. Well, I can change it. So if I change this and I make it pivot here instead now, all right? We're going to put the weight back on. It's now equal. Okay? So it's now equal on both sides. Change the fulcrum. So I change the fulcrum. Perfect. All right? If I change the fulcrum, now when I lift it up, we'll see if this is strong enough to hold the weight. Now when I lift it up and I let go, it's going to release, right? It doesn't work that well. It doesn't work very well because this meter stick isn't strong enough to hold that much weight. So this is where I had it originally. Okay? And when I have it originally here, and I'm going to hold the weight instead. When I have it originally here, and I let go, <laughs> that's a lever. It is a lever. Perfect. So, you could, so, so if you make it like a lever, you could put something else on top. How do I make it more like a lever? Less, um, I'm saying less like a lever, so that when you put another elastic string. So the elastic, how does that make it like a lever? Not, not more of a lever. I'm saying to make it go farther so that if you, when you put the elastic string, it can reset. So the elastic string will be giving it what? The power to reset. Mm -hmm. So the elastic string will give it energy, right? Yeah. And I could add that too. So I could have two different things giving me energy. I could use both mass and an elastic stretching thing, right? But so if I have this here and I let go, all right, using that much power. If I move this down, all right, even closer, is it going to fall as far? No. No. What else changes though? There's two things that change. This isn't going to fall as far. What's going to go farther? The top. The other end is going to go farther, right? So I let go here, and it goes that moved farther. That's something else to think about, okay? Because if you have two circles that your object is going to move through, all right, and one circle is that far, and one is that far, which one's going faster? The bigger, the bigger one. The bigger one, okay? So the length of your arm matters on both of these, all right? What matters on this one for that? There's not an the arm wood. that's bending. The wood, the wood can bend. It's the string. The string. So the length that it travels is what changes here, all right? So, does anybody have any questions about any of that? Oh. Oh. Anyone have any questions about that at all? Behind yeah. you. Um. Whenever. Is there like. Whenever it's smaller, it goes shorter. 
So if it's smaller, it goes shorter. So if I had a bigger arm on this, it would be moving faster at the end. All right? So it's going at faster speed means it's going to take more energy, right? But if I have a bunch of energy and I can't put it into my object effectively, then it's wasted energy and it's useless. So getting the arm the right length, again, if we go too high with the length of the arm, it's not going to move fast at all. It's just going to fall off. But if we uh, go too low, then it's just going to fall quickly. Okay? So we want to find, again, that optimum angle, that optimum length. All right? You can go beyond and mess up too. So when I say making it bigger makes it faster, making it bigger can, can also make it slower if you go too far. So testing, you know, you have to have your, uh, your plan, your hypothesis as to what's going to happen, and you have to test it. If you test it and it doesn't do what you thought it did, what do you have to do? Make a new one. Change. Change your hypothesis. Perfect. Make a new one. So you guys need to think about this. You need to think about how you're going to design it, what factors change. And then once you have all your um, thoughts in place, make a plan, design it, and test it. All right? What can you use in your classrooms for this elastic material? You have to use classroom supplies for this. So what can you use? Rubber bands. Rubber bands? A chair. A chair? A chair? Yeah, you can use it. 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 So you can, what can you use for like an elastic material here, for like the catapult or the ballista? What can I use? Rubber bands. Rubber bands. This is a uh, elastic string. It's like a craft elastic string that was also in the classroom. So anything stretchy, right? Rubber, which pretty much is rubber bands and that stuff. There's not really a lot of stuff that gives you a lot of stretch in the classroom. All right. What can we use for lever arms? Rulers. Rulers. Meter sticks. Yard sticks. All right. Is a ruler or a yard stick going to be better? A yardstick. Why? Because it's longer. It gives you more power, right? What do you use for your base and your frames? You guys have said this a couple of times already. Chairs. 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 Tables. All right. They're very sturdy. They're very easy to use. Now, what can I use to pivot? Because I have to have a pivot here. I have to have a pivot here. You can, but how? Um, there's not a lot of great stuff for this. You can use stuff like, uh, like clothespins or binder clips or different clips like that. They will work. A much better system. Is anyone here Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts? Boy Scouts. What about used to be? That count? Yeah. 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 Right. So. There's a thing, I used it here, all right? I just used string to hold this together. This duct tape is just because it was slipping. But I just used string to hold this together. They're called lashings, all right? You can look them up, you can read about them online, you can learn how to use them. They will let you build very, very strong things to hold stuff together that won't slip. Does duct tape slip? No. Yes, it does. Duct tape is very stretchy, all right? A little bit of stretch lets it waggle a lot. Is that good or bad for it? Good. Why is it good? It's bad. bad. All right? Because if it's, if it's going to uh, waggle like that, what's it going to do? It's going to have? Unsturdiness. Oh, it changed the direction. And it's going to lose what? Energy. Energy. All right? That's what we're talking about with friction and air resistance. We lose energy. We can kind of ignore those. We lose energy into the machine itself, though. That's a lot more energy. That matters. Okay? So those are a couple different materials you can use to build your catapults, a couple of different methods, all right? So I recommend you guys look this up online. I would recommend you look up the best angle to launch it at and think about how you can change that angle, okay? Anyone have any questions at all? Anybody? No? No one? So you guys are all completely ready to design your own catapult right now. Yes! yes. Give you show paper, you could draw one up, you know how exactly how far it's gonna fly. I Guys, guys, we got a question. Yes. It's actually not a question. It's kinda like if you don't if it doesn't like if you made it and it looks really good and you feel like it's going to 
shoot really far and you shoot it like back and it and it went up. Um, if it doesn't go far, that means you did something wrong. Or you need to like like you said pull it up a little bit um, up so it like that one it like. So what you're asking is if you if you build one and you launch it and it comes off of your catapult and it goes like this. Yeah. That's not very far, right? No, is right. that what you're asking? How can you change that? Um, that's kind of what I was talking about here. So there's a couple different ways to change that. On um, uh, catapult, you can actually have a piece here that stops it. So when this comes up to here, you have your little basket. If it gets stopped, whatever's in the basket is going to keep going. Okay? It's kind of how this one works, except this one just releases uh, over time. But if I was to stop it right here, that would make it stop, and then the piece would keep going. Right? So putting that stop at a different spot changes the angle that it releases at. All right. On uh, trebuchet, which do you guys look this up? The way a trebuchet works is there's a little string attached between the object and the trebuchet, and there's a little hook right here. The shape of that hook means it'll let go of the string at a different spot. Changing the shape of that hook is how you change the angle. A ballista, how do we change the angle on it? Raise and lower, right? Raise and lower the, the arm that's firing a lot. Okay? Any other questions? That was a really good question. Anybody else? likes math. Good. Good. It's great. Okay? So when you come into this kind of stuff, all right, this is science. This is engineering. Science and engineering are both really, really strongly based in what? Math. All right? All of this stuff up here. Uh, if I had enough information, I could take this and I'll go ahead and write the full formula for you guys. So for this one over here, if I was to write the full formula for the energy, it would be uh, Yes. 
explain why? Because it is flexible. It's flexible, so it can store energy. What about right now? Does it have it's energy? Yeah. Yes. yes. So okay. So when we actually get into the complicated math on this, this is the energy that's stored because the ruler is still spinning, and this is the energy that's stored in the weight that's still attached to the ruler. Okay? You guys can kind of ignore those for this, for this class. This is a lot more complicated math. All right? But if you explore this and you're interested in science, then you can design things like this, you can build things like this, and you can know how they're going to work before you build them. You can know what they'll do before you make them. All right? You can do it most importantly. What's the most important thing to do when you're doing anything like this? Starts with an S. Alright guys? Any of these things, alright? They're moving very fast. If I let go of this and there's anything in the way and I pull it, that was really slow, but um, this one over here is much better. So if I pull this back and I let go and there's someone in the way, what's gonna happen? Yeah. 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 Hurt. Alright, so safety is also extremely important for you guys to keep in mind here. And when you're really designing, this is kind of a toy level, right? But if you're designing like a really big thing that's launching stuff, then Knowing exactly how far it's going to go and knowing exactly what it's going to do, is that important? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. You can destroy things. You can hit things. You can break things. All right? So, learning stuff like this, exploring science, anything that interests you, look into it. Learn about it. All right? Don't just think, oh, that's kind of cool, and then walk away. Think, that's kind of cool. I want to know more about that. I want to be able to do that. All right? You guys can learn anything you want to learn. You just have to put your mind to it and try. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody have any, any questions at all about anything?